than they can count, which is not actually that many for some <laughs> Some of the new subjects too have had new Year 12 syllabuses, including across the sciences, where a major change has been the introduction of a new depth study or research project. Uh, I know how much you've loved those depth studies, <laughs> uh, but what you may not be aware of is that some of the staff have also been involved in a depth study as well. For the past three years, I, along with Professors Hasenbein and Propstein, have been engaged in an intense and rigorous longitudinal study of a new species, which I am okay. pleased to announce today, we have named Homo fortianus hasenbinensis, <laughs> commonly known as the class of 2019. For years there have been some controversy over the identification of Homo fortianus as a separate species. The males in particular uh, have often been thought to be a subspecies of a silverback gorilla. <laughs> The defining characteristics being a high level of intelligence, sophisticated use of tools and language, which to date have not been observed in Homo fortianus. <laughs> <laughs> the, the report I have prepared for you today is based on over 7,000 hours of observation, gained from living among these fascinating creatures and observing them in their natural habitat. <laughs> the population size has remained fairly stable at n equals 152, although we did lose some individuals to poachers along the <laughs> I believe for the most part they only took the dead wood. <laughs> Ashley, Brendan, Dennis, Eric, Gabriel, George, Luchain, Nick, Richard, Reza, Tony, Victor, William, and Yash. Uh, and it helped to maintain the overall health and strength of the cobra, as did the injection of some fresh genetic material we received in the form of Alan, Andrew, Caitlin, Catherine, Dara, Hazel, Ginger, Joanna, Karen, Catherine, Kang, Raph, San, Serena, Veronica, and even briefly Joseph. <laughs> and even more briefly Sabrina. <laughs> The, the juvenile plumage of Homo fortianus is exceptionally beautiful. The crisp white underbelly with a line of brilliant maroon down the centre, which appears in wintertime, offset by grey and navy markings on the legs. However, once individuals reach sexual maturity, a dramatic change in their appearance occurs. Strange, indecipherable messages appear on their backs. Some individuals display an astounding variety of colour in their plumage. <laughs> Marley Woods. <laughs> For a long time, the meaning of these irregular, non-uniform markings was unclear. It's a form of camouflage to hide from the predatory plovers that also have in, have in their environment. <laughs> Is it some form of elaborate courtship ritual? But after much study, we have concluded that these variations are actually a genetic abnormality and mutations, if you like, highly correlated with gen genetic markers for low intelligence. <laughs> the diet of Homo fortianus seems to consist mainly of Portuguese chicken and <laughs> tea. However, in recent years, it appears that certain members of the tribe Alan Zing, Chris, Daniels, Hon and Wang, Haswell, Humphrey, Justin, Shu and Wu, Matthew Nguyen, Oscar, Patrick, Ru, the Pauls, Choi and Vu, Rogan and Tute, uh, have also actually learned to cook for themselves. And they do so at every opportunity, whether it be the fish balls at Year 9 camp, hot pot at Year 10 camp, or catering their own barbecue at the Year 12 camp. <laughs> In order to communicate, Homo fortianus have, with varying degrees of success, learned to imitate human speech and writing. <laughs> Although some seem to have evolved their own language. Uh, despite hours of study and analysis, our best linguists have still been unable to decipher the script, the best examples of which appear in Aroli and Max Bennett's trial exams. <laughs> And our expert team of handwriting specialists I thought they had made a breakthrough with one of Max's pieces of writing. Although all it turned out to say was, uh, I think it's Uja Buja Baba. Which is actually more comprehensive on the read on these extension to English projects. Oh. 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 Oh.
you don't lose tonight since they're addition. <laughs> Another characteristic of the species species is a surprising ability to make poor decisions. Uh, these range from relatively minor, such as Alan Jow's decision to wear jeans to a water fight. <laughs> Veronica's decision to do extension mats. <laughs> some, of them, some of them are a little more bizarre, uh, such as Leon's decision in year 10 to pay David Wayne to do his elective geography. <laughs> Most surprising. 
we've all voted. Today I learned that Hugo Degatati actually owns a school uniform. <laughs> At this point, it's important to mention that the research team found something strange happening to them over the course of the study. Uh, despite ourselves, we found ourselves starting to develop an emotional attachment to the subjects of our investigation. It's been a real joy this year to watch Lavender, Lily, Lily and Rosie blossom. <laughs> I've admired not only the, the obvious brilliance of students like Giorgio, Neve, Yolana, and many others, but also the quieter, under the radar achievements of Paul Vu, Finn Collins, Aiden EP. I've been impressed. I've been impressed by the integrity and the character of many of you, including Christian, Gemma, Jenny, Sandy. On the sporting field, I've admired Yaron and Patrick, uh, whose skill and commitment to their sports has seen them compete at state and national levels as well as honourable mentions to Eric in Frisbee, Caleb in Volleyball, Ethan in Basketball. Uh, perhaps most of all on the sporting field, uh, I have enjoyed yesterday watching Catherine Newman absolutely own Patrick Pistani at Dodgeball. <laughs> uh, I've been moved by the combination of creativity, beauty and discipline uh, in Patrick Wu, Michelle Yang and Hugh Gold Giles' performance, in Robert's composition, in Hazel's line uh, in Ashley and Bonnie's photography, in Tara's direction. Uh, I've been inspired by the dedication with which you've pursued your interests and passions. Sunil to charity, Nicholas, Nicholas Mock to photography, Lucy to veganism, <laughs> uh, Angie and Rachel to dancing, Betty to the INP, uh, Max Tessarero to Minecraft. <laughs> I've also admired the quiet courage shown by many of you, like Catherine, Frank, Gabriel, Jenny, Julian, Larissa, Rena, Sandy Tesnova, and many others, uh, in dealing with challenges or difficult situations, often that you've had to face alone, uh, but which have eventually ended up in my office. <laughs> <laughs> know that I've never, I never find those times easy, and I thank you for the privilege it's been to have your trust, to hear your stories, and to help you try to work out for yourself what comes next. I've also, admired the, I've also admired the friendship and support that many of you have shown each other in those difficult times. As our scientific study comes to an end, I'll miss you 12. Without year 12, 2019, not only will the school lose a disproportionate number of Aidens, Allens, Davids, Jackies and Jacksons, <laughs> but we will lose a year group that is admittedly sometimes fractious and known for its lack of cohesion. <laughs> but a year group that has also made me very proud has brought a smile to my face and a laugh to my day, as often as it has brought a tear to my eye, a migraine to my brain, and a dagger to my heart. <laughs> to date, our scientific observations of Homo fortianus has in my answers, the class of 2019, have taken place exclusively in captivity. However, we are confident that they are now ready to be released into the wild, and that once set free, the knowledge, skills, character and values that they have nurtured here at Fort Street will ensure that they thrive in whatever next steps they take. Congratulations, you all. Thank you and farewell.